are we're going to make a video of timing the magneto on the Pratt & Whitney Jr. Wasp engine. In this case it's on a Beach 18. It's the R985 engine. And I've already timed the magnetos on this engine so uh, I'm just going through the process but I'm not probably going to make any actual changes. At least I hope I don't have to make any actual changes. So the first thing we're going to do is going to show you how to check the timing, see what the timing is. And the first thing I need to do is turn on my magneto synchronizer, which I left turned off. I'm in the, this is a tail, a, a nose wheel airplane. Actually, I did leave it turned on. This is a nose wheel airplane. And I'm in the wheel well, which gives me access to the back of the magnetos. Okay, so. When we time the magnetos, we're going to check two things. We're going to check the internal timing of the mag, aka the E-gap, and we're going to check the timing of the mags to the engine. So, the way we check the timing of the mag to the engine is the first thing we need to do is find top dead center of the engine. So you put your finger over the spark plug hole and you find top dead center. Once you've got top dead center, we're going to install the time right tool. Time right tool goes in there to, into the spark plug hole and then you have the indicating dial. Let me turn my uh, light off here. The indicating dial. There's different um, scales you put. You make sure you have the scale relative to your engine. Pratt Whitney R985. You make sure you're using the right arm. It says you use arm A. Hook end up. I don't know if you'll be able to see that this is arm A. Okay, the A is facing this way. Yeah, you can see that. That's arm A. That's the hook end, obviously. Hook end. I'm going to put it up. I'm going to insert this in there. Make sure everything's nice and firm. Excuse me for a minute. My light turned a little bit. Yeah. No, nope, we don't want to zoom. I'm going to be doing some editing on this. All right, we're going to hook, insert this in there. Make sure that's nice and tight. We're going to insert this. And then we're going to turn this to make sure our scale runs parallel to the center line of the cylinder. All right, and I do it by sighting down to the center cylinder nut. Okay, next, we need to find the exact top dead center, which is going to be somewhere around there. And that's easy enough. We push our scale all the way up. We bring the engine forward, it drags the scale down, and then as we pass up that center, the indicator comes back up and the scale is left at top dead center. Let me see if it works better with the light. Nope. Now, what we're going to do next, we're going to move the scale. We're going to be very careful not to touch the pointer. We're going to place the scale with the pointer pointing exactly at zero. I would get a little closer with a flashlight. That's pretty close, though. Now we're backing up again. Taking a video here. Move the pointer up. Okay, now as we bring the engine forward, the pointer is indicating the position in degrees 
before top dead center. So once we hit 25, we're going to hear the beeper. Here she comes. She'll be coming in. Okay, no beeper means something is not hooked up down below. Anyway, let's double check our zero. That's pretty good. All right, something is not working down below, so let's take a look. Light. Zoom out. Light. On. Zoom, zoom, zoom. All right. So coming back in here, we probably just don't have a good ground. Oh, duh. I hooked up the wrong wire. Okay, so now you can see our our synchronizer. It's a standard unit from Aircraft Spruce. I like it better than the, the large unit. The larger box because the larger box makes a lot of noise once it's uh, turned on this one doesn't make noise until your points actually open so that's pretty good okay so I got my green lead connected to the points I'm gonna put my black lead on the ground and the light is on for the green light is on so that indicates that points are closed once the points break once they open that light goes out and we'll hear a tone flashlight out all right heading back up to the time right, now we move our pointer up past 25, and as we bring the engine around to 25, up oh, there she is right there. There's a there's a, a beep. All right, we move the pointer up past 25 as we bring the engine down. 225 we're listening for the timing our hair above 25 there it is right there just a hair above 25 that's great we can double check the pointer again Right there on zero. All right, we're going to check now. We know that we're timed to the engine at 25. Now we're going to check our internal timing on the uh, mag, also known as the E gap, which gives you your maximum. There it is right there. Boom. Right at 25. All right, light on. Now we're going to go underneath. 
There's my straight edge. Hmm, it's interesting. Stop beeping. All right, so now we come in here. Let's turn this device off. Believe it or not, it actually bumped a little back. Apparently, something moved a little. All right, I have a straight edge here. Where's my straight edge? How the fuck's my straight edge? check the internal timing of the mag, also known as the E-gap. We're going to put a straight edge across two flats. There's a flat here, there's a flat there. And then we want the straight edge to line up with the marks here and the corresponding mark up here. There's a 1 32nd of an inch tolerance. So, if all is good, we're going to be right there on the money. There we are. That's good. So we're sitting right there. And on the top, well, you're not going to get closer than that because it's kind of uh, straddling the left side of the bottom one and a little off the left side of the right one. So that means our internal timing's good, our external timing's good. This mag is timed. Now, the only other thing I wanted to show you was what would we do if we actually wanted to adjust the timing of the engine. Well, let me show you something else first. All right. If we didn't like the timing here, the way we adjust that is like a old school Volkswagen distributor where you're just going to loosen some screws and rotate the breaker plate. Okay, that's not for the engine timing, that's for the internal timing. You want your low, your points to break, and this can be done off the airplane, you want your points to break just when those cutouts line up with the index marks. And just to make sure you understand what's supposed to break, there's a red dot in here, red dot in there. <laughs> red dot in there and it's that lobe that's going to break as she comes around so you can do that off the airplane on a bench all right now how do we adjust the timing to the engine well that's not a happy a happy thing to do and the way we do that let me get a see if i can find it there we are is with this coupler, this rubber coupler. You see it has black marks on it from my timing. Rubber coupler between the engine coupler and the mag coupler, there's a rubber coupler. Interesting is that the rubber coupler has 19 lobes on one side and 20 lobes on the other side. So, when you rotate the rubber coupler, coupler, one lobe, the side that has 20 is going to reflect a 360 divided by 20 or 18 degree rotation, while the side that has the 19 lobes is going to reflect a 360 divided by 19, which is 19 degrees. So 20 deg 18 degrees on one side, 20 degrees on the other side. That means that in order to line it up, you have to move one side one degree. So that gives you a one degree adjustment. What you're gonna do is you rotate, looking at the engine, you rotate the rubber coupling one lobe counterclockwise to advance and clockwise to retard. One lobe equal one degree and that clockwise counterclockwise is relative to the engine side, looking at the engine side. So when I first uh, started this engine yesterday, uh, this cam, this uh, was timed to 24. The boss wanted it to be 25 because he didn't, he just wanted to be perfect on it. So 
I had to, I made some marks, reference marks, and then I rotated my rubber coupling one lobe counterclockwise. And you can see how my mark on the rubber coupling is one mark lower, one lobe lower than where I started. Then I had to rotate the so I rotated one lobe, one, one down on the engine side, and I had to rotate one lobe up on the mag side. And that gave, now you can see there's a slight differential between the marks on the engine side and the mag side, and that's the one degree adjustment that I made. That's how you adjust to the engine. That's a little difficult because you have to unbolt the magneto from its base plate and it's safety wired and it's really hard to get to and it's really hard to safety wire. So there you have it. Uh, after you make the adjustment and you're happy with what you got, you put the bolts back and well, I put the bolts back first, double check, and then if you like everything, you go ahead and safety it up. That is all.